Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ian and Lily and Dana. And uh, we're hanging out at the river on my day off. <laughs> oh no! And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of going to an in-person boot camp. Um, so I'll try to make it quick so we can get back to enjoying this beautiful day on the river. You can see this awesome place where we're hanging out. And okay, so let's get started. So a uh, little bit of a background. I've attended uh, a part-time and a full-time coding boot camp in San Francisco, California. Uh, I've also taught at several boot camps as a TA and an assistant instructor and a lead instructor. Uh, so I've seen a, I've kind of seen it from every angle and I have a little bit of uh, input I, or feedback I think that would be beneficial to people that are considering going to an uh, in-person boot camp. So the elephant in the room, boot camps are super expensive. Uh, I went back in 2014, late 2014. And now in early mid 2018, I'm still paying off the debt that I incurred from going to that boot camp. Was it worth it? Uh, yes, I had a situation where I was able to get a private loan, so no interest, anything like that, and it worked out really well for me. Does it always work out like that for most people? No, not necessarily. So is it always gonna be worth it for everyone out there? Definitely not. I've seen several times where people had to like sell their cars to finish making their payment, um, you know, d do drastic things to be able to afford to go to a coding boot camp. And some of them didn't even complete the course. Some of them dropped out before it finished, uh, or they just didn't find developer jobs after the course was over. So, the first and foremost, uh, if you have an opportunity to experience some coding education on your own online or at a you know, like a free seminar or something go ahead and take that opportunity because you want to get your feet wet and know that coding is for sure for you before you take the leap of attending an in-person boot camp because it will be expensive even the quote unquote inexpensive ones are like five thousand dollars which is a lot of money to me and i'm sure it's a lot of money to uh some of the other people out there probably including you so um Benefits once you actually get into the boot camp is that you have a structured curriculum. Typically, you have uh, pretty well rounded instructors with some experience who know what they're talking about and are able to convey the material to the students in such a way that allows them to learn easily. Uh, that's not how it always is, but ideally, that's the situation you would be in, especially if you're paying 15, 20, and 25 grand for an education. Um, so you have a structured curriculum, you have a decent instructor, and you also have access to instructors and TAs so that you can get answers to your questions or get over the hurdles that you're gonna experience in your learning very quickly, which is crucial for being able to succeed in a short amount of time, like the three to four, six months uh, that most coding boot camps are scheduled for. So uh, a tip, if you do go to a coding boot camp is start looking for jobs early. Students typically wait until after the cohort's over, after uh, the three month period or whatever, uh, and then they start looking. Go ahead and start applying for jobs and building your portfolio as you're going through the boot camp. I think I've seen that serve a lot of students really well, and they typically are able to find a job maybe even before they get out, but definitely around the time they get out or shortly thereafter. Uh, otherwise, you're looking at potentially spending the next three to six plus months looking for a job, which is going to be it's going to be more debt, uh, especially if you're not working, um, and it's it can be disheartening. So, to set yourself up for success, go ahead and make sure that you get started on the path of looking for a job before you ever graduate. Okay, so those are the pros. Some of the cons, obviously, like I said, is the cost, the price tag. Um, the fact that even if you don't finish, they're still gonna take your money, the boot camp's still gonna take your money, and that really sucks because you know you just invested a lot of your time and money into something and you're hoping to get a job so you can pay that money back and so you can you know change your career. And sometimes it doesn't always work out for people and the boot camp, most of them could care less. So uh, do your best to do your homework beforehand to make sure that uh, you are set up for success so that 
you're not wasting a big chunk of money and time uh, and you know taking on all the stress that comes with those things okay so what are some alternatives what would I do different now if I uh, had the opportunity back when I went to a coding boot camp well some of the courses that are online now were not available back when I was uh, learning the code so I wouldn't necessarily have had the same opportunities I did try to teach myself the code several times I actually did know a couple of the basic languages HTML CSS a little bit of JavaScript and PHP and I was even making money as a freelance uh, quote-unquote web developer doing stuff with WordPress and just building static websites so I had a little bit of a head start um, but it did take some in-person instruction and discipline to be able to understand things like JavaScript and Ruby, Ruby on Rails, learning web frameworks, and just learning some of the more complex concepts. I had started learning that stuff early. I found some resources like for Ruby on Rails that I kind of understood, but then they got into testing and some of the more complex uh, subjects, and I would run into walls and I wouldn't have anyone to help me figure it out and get over those hurdles. And so I would just put it off, procrastinate, forget everything I had learned, and then eventually quit until I came back and went to the boot camp at a later time, at which point things made more sense because I had people there to answer my questions whenever they came up. So in that regard, if you're going to learn online from one of the many resources that are available to you for free or for really cheap, um, the things that are available now that weren't necessarily available back when I was learning to code, like some of the courses on Udemy, like Colt Steele's The Web Developer Bootcamp, some of his competitors' courses, uh, some brand new courses that are just being released in 2018, uh, and then all the different documentation that's really well made and free tutorials and YouTube videos and channels that are out there that will teach you everything you need to be a web developer in 2018 for free or for cheap. Um, what you need to be able to succeed with those things is one, you need discipline. Uh, you need to be able to set aside the time every day to learn the material and stay on track and then two you if you can get a mentor you should definitely seek out and find a mentor because that is going to be key in getting over some of those hurdles whenever you hit those walls and you just can't find the answer to something having a mentor who you can uh, kind of have as a sounding board and ask questions of and get answers from that is going to help you immensely so there's places like hackhands.com I think codementor.io or something like that uh, I think Full is a boot camp. They're a little bit more expensive than some of the places I just named, but they have some mentor type programs. I think maybe even, um, oh man, I can't think of the name of it right now. Anyway, just do some Googling for mentor type programs online. Um, there's people like me who do 30 minute to an hour long uh, segmented sec uh, sessions for tutoring and counseling or uh, consulting rather. Uh, so if you want to hire me, go ahead and hit me up and talk to me about it. Um, I may have some time to be able to help you out with that. But finding a mentor is key, and I think you'll be surprised that in the open source developer world, there are a lot of people out there that are willing to help you out for free or for very cheap. And you will save an insane amount of money considering what you would be paying for an in-person boot camp. Okay, so free materials, they're online, find them. Uh, I'll go ahead and link to a couple good ones in the description here. Finding a mentor, I'll link to some places in the description as well uh, to help you get started on that search. But there are definitely people out there that are happy and willing to help you uh, in your learning journey. And then just having the discipline and the consistency to make sure that you come back every day and do that 30 minutes or do that hour of learning, watch those videos and you know work through those tutorials and just make sure that you don't give up until you achieve your goals. Um, that is gonna be your recipe for success and you will save yourself an insane amount of money. You could do this stuff in the evenings, even if you're working full time um, and you're not gonna have to you know quit your job or go spend 20 grand at a boot camp that you may or may not uh, be able to finish and find a job from. Um, the success rate at those places is pretty high, but I have seen almost very consistently, almost in every cohort, people who do not finish and end up wasting their money and their time. And uh, that's not something I want to see any of you do, so uh, hopefully you'll take my advice 
go the online route, find the free resources, find the cheap courses uh, with the great material from coding bootcamp instructors like Colt Steele and myself and uh, a lot of our competitors that are out there putting out really great material for people to learn online for free or for cheap and then finding someone to help you uh, along whenever you run into problems. Uh, so that's my advice for whether or not to attend a coding boot camp and how you can succeed with some alternate options. Uh, I'm going to get back to this beautiful day and we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.